What do you think of when you hear the word elephant? Do you think of their massive size, our largest land mammal? Do you think of their trunks, those kind of strange half arm, half nose? Do you think of their social nature, the way they've been seen mourning their dead? Or do you think of those long ivory tusks? Tragically, Africa's elephants are under a vicious attack by poachers who will kill any elephant with tusks, even a mother with a helpless baby by her side. Today, let me take you to the African country of Zambia, where we're working to help elephants in many ways, including rearing baby orphan elephants for release back to the wild. Most of the elephants that we find orphaned in Zambia are as a result of poaching, um, victims of poaching. Their mothers have been shot for their ivory tusks and then if, if the calf is less than two years old it can't survive without its mother's milk and so it becomes an orphan. And these elephants inevitably get found by either the Zambian Wildlife Authority or um, lodge owners, people who are out in the national park who find these baby elephants wandering around skinny and looking for help. When a baby elephant loses its mother, it's an incredibly traumatic experience, um, as it would be for anyone who loses their mother. Um, but most of these elephants have also been through the fact that their mothers were shot, so it's a pretty horrendous experience for them. Um, and then once they lose their mother, they're without support. Unfortunately, within the herd, the grandmother or the aunties aren't able to feed the calf and so it generally gets left from its entire family. So it's a very traumatising experience and when we find these elephants, they can quite often exhibit um, signs of post-traumatic stress and become quite depressed. The Elephant Orphanage project was set up with the mission to rescue, rehabilitate and release orphaned elephants back into the wild. So that the whole focus is to get these elephants back out living in a wild and natural environment. So throughout their care and rehabilitation we have to ensure that we have as minimal impact on these elephants as possible. Because one day we're wanting them to be wild again and living in the national parks. In order to focus on a release programme, uh, we've established two different facilities to look after these elephants. We have a nursery facility where the youngest elephants are brought in, those who are heavily traumatised and often sick straight after rescue, where they're given an in intense amount of care and support. Um, they're raised with a lot of milk formula and then to a point where they can become weaned from milk and no longer so dependent on our support. At that age, we've moved the elephants to a release facility which is based in the National Park in the centre of Zambia, where they undergo a much more free and wild existence with our support in the background to make sure that they're safe. The road to survival for these orphan elephants starts at the Lilai Nursery. Lilai is a one-of-a-kind refuge dedicated to caring for the most vulnerable elephants you'll ever meet. We are about 20 minutes drive south of Lusaka. The um, property was kindly allocated to us by the owners of Lalai Lodge to be used as an elephant orphanage nursery. We're caring for six elephants here at the Lalai Elephant Nursery. They are aged from one to four years old. They have been rescued in Zambia as a result of poaching or human elephant conflict and here we've brought them into the Lalai Elephant Nursery to care for them and enable them to recover from the trauma of losing their natural families and reintroduce them into a surrogate family where they can have the comfort and affection of their siblings in the surrogate herd. Yes, it's a 24 hour job. They are like human babies. Um, elephant calves are permanently feeding all day long, so they're fed every three hours, 24 hours a day. We luckily have a fantastic team of keepers here. There's 18 of them uh, in total between the two properties. And they really are animal behaviour experts in their own right, above and beyond anybody I've ever met. These guys spend 24 hours a day in the bush and in the stables with these elephants. They can tell you who's going to walk in which direction, who's not feeling very well today, who's friends with who, 
um, so they're, it's, they're a huge resource for animal behaviour knowledge. A new day at the nursery and the keepers are getting ready for a landmark event. Elephants Cavalamanja and Maramba are moments away from embarking on a journey back to their home, back to a wild existence. Tomorrow we'll be doing a translocation of two of the elephants from the nursery facility in Lusaka out to the release facility in Kafu National Park. The translocation is a really significant stage in the process. Um, number one, because it's the first relocation we've actually done with these elephants, moving them from a nursery to a release facility. Um, but it's a significant change in their life where they'll undergo a much more wild and natural lifestyle from now on and they'll start their steps towards living back in the wild. Exciting day planned tomorrow. The important thing is that the elephants just think it's another normal day um, and we just all try to be as calm as possible with them um, and hopefully that will keep them calm as well. So we've just tried to make the inside of the truck as homely as possible for the elephants. Um, obviously lots of grass on the floor and then browse that they would normally be eating. Um, at night time we provide this in their stables for them so it's the stuff that they're used to and they like. But we're hoping that by putting it on the inside here it's just going to attract them inside a little bit more. Um, until we try in the next hour we're not going to know if they'll come in or not. Rachel looks on as the team try to entice Cavalamanja and Maramba to walk inside the transport truck. This is a crucial step. Oscar, can you wave a bottle through the flap and see if anyone decides it's interesting enough? If they're able to get them comfortable and walking into the transport vehicle, they won't need to anaesthetise them. Um, guys, we'll let them walk in, walk out, just get used to it. This is perfect. Rachel wants no unpleasant surprises or delays ahead of a gruelling 11-hour drive. For the moment, optimism prevails. I work alongside the keepers on a day-to-day -day basis um, and I witness the relationship that they have with these elephants and it's incredible. These elephants have lost their own mothers um, through tragic circumstances. So it's vital that they have a surrogate mother figure and that's the role that the, the keepers fulfill. Elephants are highly emotional creatures and they do need that high level of care and this is where the, the keepers step in. The keepers provide the care and nurture that they need on a day-to-day -day basis. Oliver in particular is very close to Kavalamanja and I'm sure he'll be very sad to see her go to Kafui. Yes, Kavalamanja is my, my favourite because he was the first to come here and I was the first to meet her. So she is my favourite. She knows that I look after her. My favourite is Maramba. Uh, I like Maramba because you can control him easily just by fable. You'll be able to understand, say what I'm doing is wrong, no, this direction, no, I should stop this. So I like Maramba because you can just easily control him just by calling his name Maramba, stop it and definitely you stop. Mm -hmm. I'm very happy because uh, for me, I feel like uh, I've done my best and I'm very happy that he, she'll go in cafe and meet others. And she'll be waiting for, for a releasing there to the bush. I'm very happy for her. Yes, when I, I, when I was young, I dreamed of working with animals, and it is, it's my career. It's move day, and the last minute preparations are underway. Just like yesterday, Maramba and Kavala offer no resistance and are lured in with milk bottles. The two elephants gently walk into the transport truck. Ahead is their long journey to Kafui National Park. Well, for now, things are going on very well. The animals have just been sedated, and the sedative has just taken into effect. Animals are very calm in here, and they are just socializing within themselves. They are also browsing there. In a very few minutes, we'll just be starting off for Kafue National Park. It's about uh, maybe 400 kilometers away from here, so it'll be a long journey. Maybe it'll take almost most of the day on the road of the animals.
Back at the Lilai Nursery, it's work as usual for the keepers and staff who are dedicated to providing the highest quality individual animal care. Um, so I'm just preparing the milk feeds for the elephants for the next 24 hours. Every elephant in the nursery is fed a two litre bottle of infant formula every three hours round the clock. So as you can imagine, we do get through quite a lot of milk in one day. So um, the mix that I'm preparing, this is um, human infant formula. Uh, elephants can't digest cow's milk, it gives them a really upset stomach. So human infant formula is the best thing for them. But we also add a number of other ingredients to the, the formula as well. Um, as well as the infant formula, they also get jungle oats, which helps them to put on body condition. Um, we put a number of different vitamins and supplements in, depending on the elephant's age and its development and any nutritional problems that it may have. We also add coconut to their feeds as well, which contains the same type of fat as what is found in elephant milk. Every individual elephant gets a different formula based on its age and its development. So the, the pots for the younger elephants, such as in Kala, uh, are much bigger as they get a very concentrated formula compared to the older elephants, Maramba and Kavala, who are currently being weaned off from milk, so their formula is very, very weak in comparison. The elephants absolutely love their milk feed. They know when to expect their next bottle and they start to get quite excited. And when we feed them, they come running up for their milk, so they do absolutely love it. They start to eat um, solid foods around the age of about six months old. And at that time they'd be starting to feed on the grasses and the, the trees and vegetation as well as um, still feeding from their mums. An elephant will start to wean off from its mother's milk around the age of about two to three years old. That's the age that we start also to wean our elephants off from the milk feeds. On the road, Maramba and Kavala are making slow but steady progress. We've been driving about six to seven hours right now and so far everything's been going brilliantly. We couldn't have hoped for it to be any better. The elephants went into the box great, they've been settled from pretty much the whole way. They have had a top up on the sedation but that's not a problem, we were expecting to do that anyway. When we stopped to water them, they drank water, they drank their milk, they ate browse, so they must be fairly comfortable and relaxed if they're eating so well. So yeah, it's been fantastic. So right now we're going to flag the truck down and check on the elephants, give them some more water, make sure they're not too hot, see how they're coping on the bumpy road and give them some more milk. Why go to all this trouble to save just a handful of baby elephants? Orphan elephants have little chance of survival in the wild without a mother, and the orphanage gives them a second chance of life. Every animal deserves to live their life free from cruelty and suffering. Because of their tusks, elephants are a favorite target for ruthless poachers who can sell their ivory for enormous profit. Elephants are being killed at an alarming rate, about 35,000 elephants die every year for their ivory. That's one elephant killed every 15 minutes. At that rate, it won't be long before populations of elephants become extinct. I4 is working hard to shut down ivory markets, to catch ivory smugglers, 
to protect elephant habitat and to train those rangers who are in the front line risking their lives to protect elephants from poachers. For the last week, uh, with support from I4, we've conducted some tactical training for the Intelligence and Investigations Unit of Zawa and also the Special Anti-Poaching Unit. <laughs> The purpose of the training is to provide the Zawa officers uh, with more knowledge and more capacity to be able to undertake their role more efficiently and effectively in the field. It's vitally important. Without the support of I4, we wouldn't be able to do what we do on a daily basis, not just at the Elephant Orphanage project, but also from a law enforcement point of view, which you know, we spend a lot of time and effort rescuing orphaned elephants as a result of poaching and human-elephant conflict. Um, and a lot of time and effort goes into rehabilitating them so that they can be safely released into the wild. And if we don't make the wild safe, then it would all be a waste of time. And to make the release area safe, there's a number of components that we need to take into account. Most importantly is the local communities living contiguous to the national parks. And if we don't have buy-in from those local communities, then we're wasting our time. So we approach conservation from a holistic point of view, which includes law enforcement, community outreach, education of, of youngsters in schools, and also a bit of research to verify the impact that we're making through some of the law enforcement work we do. Back on the road, the convoy transporting Maramba and Kavala reached the entry gate at Kafui National Park. As night falls, the truck backs up to the ramp that's been built specially to make it easy for the elephants to walk off the truck. Come away for your own safety. The team anxiously awaits to see how the elephants will react to their new surroundings. It's been a long day. Adrenaline's pumping right now though, because obviously it's an anxious time when they come out of the truck. Even after an uneventful transport, the cries from inside the truck reveal that the elephants are not as calm as the team would have liked. Seeing them being upset to start with is obviously not going to It's a big change for them, so you know, it's difficult to know how they're going to react, but I'm sure that exhaustion will take over soon and they'll probably both get a good night's sleep. Just grab that whole bag and there's more milk pots in there. This first couple of hours is really important to reassure them. I think right now we just need to calm them down and let them sleep for a bit. The faces that they know are still here as well, the two keepers that have come with them. Um, they've got water, they've got some browse, the keepers are going to keep coming to them with milk like they would um, back in the lie. So hopefully the fact that they have each other next door will be comforting. Uh, today, I, don't, I think things have been brilliant. I've been so impressed with how the elephants have responded. Um, you know, they walk straight into the crate to begin with. They've travelled really, really well. They've only had two shots of sedative, um, which is through a, you know, pretty much an 11 hour journey. So um, they've, they've done really, really well. The exciting part will be tomorrow when we see them meet the other elephants. 
Kafui National Park, 22,000 square kilometers of wilderness, an area the size of the country of Wales. It's a perfect home for elephants. The area that we chose has the resources that we need to be able to, to function there, so we have access to water, roads or tracks and the Ngoma forest is very close to our facility which is refuge for about a thousand wild elephants and it's very important that we're nearby to wild elephants so that the orphans have an opportunity to socialise with wild elephants and learn wild behaviours and eventually be able to integrate with them and then live back in the wild. It's what we call a soft release programme which means at no point do we open the doors and say, go, you're not allowed to come back. Obviously, it's up to the elephants what they want to do. Between the ages of 9, 10, 11, they're just reaching maturity and they will get more curious as they're stronger and feel more independent to be able to go and move on their own and integrate with wild herds. As baby elephants, they're very needy and they want attention and comfort from their keepers. As mature and growing elephants, um, who bond with each other, they're much more interested in playing with one another and eating food than spending time with people. So the main difference will be is that there'll just be less interaction and they free roam, they forage, they move around together. It's a much more social environment for them. So it's that one step closer to what it would be like if they were in the wild. The time has come for the new arrivals to meet the existing elephant herd at Kafui National Park. The guys are obviously getting very protective. I can see they wanted to intervene. Yes. And because they feel protective of the babies that they've just raised. It's really important that the keepers let the elephants establish their own relationships. A few minutes ago we were seeing Chavalandu chasing or pushing Maramba, the male and she was just kind of letting him know to behave himself and that he is now part of this new herd where he is not the boss. These bigger elephants are more dominant and well established in the herd than he is. Um, so this is the first time he's been with elephants that are bigger and stronger than him. These are tense times for Rachel and the keepers. They expect some nervousness as the elephants greet each other. The last thing they want is for it to escalate into a conflict. But order within the herd is quickly established and curiosity overcomes aggression. The elephants are greeting each other. <laughs> That with, you know, within this morning they'll be walking out together and they will be socialising well. Uh, the difference in the colour is because of the mud. The elephants that have just come from Malai have spent the last few years rolling around in red soil that we find in Lusaka. And here we have the Kalahari sand, so the elephants are much more their natural skin colour. And that's why they look a bit different this morning. I think it'll only take a few mud bathing sessions here before they blend in with the others. Kavala and Maramba have been stabled ever since they've been with us at night time um, and given milk throughout the night. But now they're here, they'll be weaned off of milk very quickly and their milk is already very weak. So they're physically not relying on it. And they will spend their nights out with the herd, able to move around, to eat still, and to socialise, which is a much more natural behaviour for elephants. But you will find that as the two new ones are getting more and more used to the herd and their life here, they'll stop worrying about needing to be near their keepers. I'm pretty happy right now. <laughs> yeah, it was really quite emotional to see them all reunited and, and with each other. This is a very great contribution to saving wildlife, especially wildlife that you easily give up because they are calves. And, uh, well, but this effort is trying to bring all those calves and save as much as we can from, from the wild. It was all a little bit unknown. We didn't know exactly how the elephants would respond to the transport and 
um, it's just been amazing to see actually it's all gone really smoothly. It couldn't have gone better. We're right here in Kafu National Park. This is their new home. They're coming from different backgrounds, but they're from, from forming a family, which they would be released back into the world as one happy troop. Yeah. Definitely I'll miss them. I'm happy because they're here at the releasing facility where they can just join the others. And the other hand is um, I'll be missing them because I was very used to them because I've been working with them for three years. So really I'm going to miss them. The I4 and GRI partnership is a hugely important feature of our organisation. Without such donor support, we simply wouldn't be able to continue doing what we're doing here. Um, we are 100% donor funded and there's only so much we can do within Zambia to raise local funds to support this kind of work and it really does need international support to continue and to progress like this. Elephants need us. If we're going to save them from extinction, we need to continue to close ivory markets to protect elephants from poachers and to save these baby orphans. But we can't do it alone. That's why we urgently need your support. Please give today to help us rescue baby elephants, protect elephants from deadly poachers. Your gift will be a gift of life for the elephants. Thank you.